In this day and age, information is infinite and the ability to share it has never been easier because of the internet. With one mouse click, one idea could go worldwide in seconds. And because of this, conspiracies have gained more traction than ever. The biggest conspiracy that's really come out has to be the flat earth. The reason it's so big is it's not just one topic, it's everything, it's all encompassing. When you start digging into the flat earth theory, you realize that everything you've been told is a lie, you question all of your beliefs, you question everything that's been told to you, and the farther you go, the more your perception of reality changes. And that's the most interesting part of it to me. Myself, about two years ago, I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast and Eddie Bravo is on. What do you think? Is the Earth flat around? I don't know if it's flat around until we see a picture from no. space. You're saying this bitch could be square. I don't know what so it is. Up until that point, I had never even thought about the shape of the Earth. It's not that important to me. I'm thinking about everything else going on in life. He said a few things that really resonated with me. It led me into watching other videos, and then I realized that it's not really about the shape of the Earth. It's everything else in this theory. When I started talking to people and listening to people that believe in it, it seemed as though this theory did way more for their lives than anything else up until this point. And it makes them so dedicated that they become a part of this movement. Like most people, I grew up in a religious household. I actually went to a Catholic school, went to church every Sunday, and I really didn't question anything I was taught. I mean, once you realize that everything you've been taught is not a universal truth, you feel lost. You start to mistrust almost everything. I really needed a connection back with reality and it seemed like conspiracies was my way of doing that. It sent me on a, on a journey just searching for what reality really was. Once I started sharing it with other people, I got mixed reactions. Some people just said I was crazy, I was an idiot, don't think that, of course the earth is round, it's not flat, don't waste your time. He sounds crazy, or does he? And it's unfortunate that that's the reaction that most people give to it because if they just gave it five more minutes of explanation, you see the shape of the earth is maybe 5% of this overall theory. It has to do so much more with life and with purpose. So I wanted to do a documentary that really gave a full spectrum look. I wanted to talk to people that are quote unquote leaders of the movement, the figureheads that newcomers are going to, referring friends to to watch videos. I also wanted to talk to people that are just getting into it people that have never actually told another person that they believe in this and just wanted to share their experience. The main goal is to get a deeper look at what motivates people to look into this theory, what does it do to them once they start believing in it, and what are their hopes for it moving forward. So let's take a deeper look into the flat earth. So day one, and what we're doing today later on is gonna be the meetup in Pasadena. But before that, when Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer land in LA, the media swarms, someone in San Juan Capistrano wanted to do a radio interview. So we're driving a few hours south. We're gonna go get some cool footage of that. Let's go. driving for like an hour, maybe 20 minutes out from our destination. I'm really excited about this interview. We get to see them in their element. You know, they are the two go-to people when it comes to this movement. Is that oh, Huh? I like your shirt. Thank you, man. My name is Mark Kendall Sargent, and I'm a flat earther. My name is Patricia Steer. I have a YouTube channel, and it's called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I started out a number of years ago playing video games for a living in Boulder, Colorado, and then transferred over to teach people proprietary software, mostly in time and attendance for about 20 years. I have said for a while now that I am not the father of Flat Earth. Uh, am I one of the, the ranking members? Sure. I mean, I've talked to a lot of, of media about this, but at the same time, what I've tried to tell people is I'm the Flat Earth freshman recruiter. Hey, you're close, and there you are. Hey! Mark, Flat Earth. 
I bring people, as many people as I can, into the concept with very easy to follow steps of how do you should, how you can look at flat earth, how to get into flat earth without really trying. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. The interview was full of interesting dialogue. Mark and Patricia came across professional and well prepared. It's easy to see why the media has chosen them to represent the movement. Thank you. And of course, like any other flat earth conversation, it ran pretty long. So right after, we were off to the meetup in Pasadena. So let me know, man, like what are some of the things that got you contemplating this? Like what are some of the things in your research that got you like thinking? I mean, obviously the moon landing, you know, because when I heard that there's no actual pictures of the Earth from space, supposedly, they're all CGI, they're all just composite images, I, it really started making me correlate things together, like, okay, the moon landing could be fake. I mean, that's been an obvious to me forever, but I never introduced it into the concept of maybe the Earth isn't what they're telling us it is, you know? So that was the big one. And then I started watching the videos that are like, you know, here's 10 proofs and the really cool edit shots and all that. They said, if an airplane were to fly straight at 500 miles an hour for a thousand miles, it should be out in the atmosphere because the airplane would constantly have to be dipping down in order to follow the Earth's curve. But then on top of that, you see the high altitude photos and the high altitude videos, um, and you know, it looks flat. You have long distance photography where they could take pictures of mountains from like hundreds of miles away that in essence on a ball, you shouldn't be able to see or they should look different. You go down this rabbit hole and you start to question everything. And I'll admit, some of this stuff does sound crazy because I think they start correlating too much or people start thinking too much into it and don't just let it settle for a second and start gathering the other reasons it is and the other lies. And I mean, I just look at it for what it is. No, that's fine. Well, I'm going to do a lot of it in slow-mo. <laughs> not <laughs> only that, but everything is in slow-mo. Hey, this slow video is going to take six hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, you want to watch this 20-hour documentary? meetup here today in Pasadena, the picnic in the park. I'm thoroughly excited about this. Um, it's going to be a great opportunity to talk to people that are just getting into the flat earth movement, see what their perspective is. Um, I've never been to one, so it's going to be a complete surprise to me how it goes. When we arrived, I was impressed by the turnout and couldn't wait to start talking with people. There's a lot of parallels between my path and other people's paths, meaning a lot of people that get into Flat Earth start out somewhere in the conspiracy world. They're suspicious by nature. Flat Earth has always been a teaser in that arena. And when they finally see it, they all have the same feeling like me when they get into it. It's like, why didn't I look at this before? How did I miss this for so long? I'm Caroline. My name is Lucy Lemons. King Joseph here. My name is David Weiss. I used to do a conspiracy podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Uh, my name is Aaron Krishak, and um, I believe a lot of things that most people don't believe. I drove five and a half hours to get here. Uh, some years when I was in university, we uh, had a course that people were very excited about, Vedic astronomy. First day of class, they say, OK, you know something about astrology? Forget everything you know. This is a flat thing. How were you introduced to the flat earth and when? A woman at work, a co-worker friend of mine, she um, one day just said, so have you heard about the flat earth? A video kept popping up and it had a picture of a boat going over water and it said the flat earth conspiracy and I thought it was going to be a joke. 
and I ignored it, and then eventually I was so bored I clicked on it. There was a suggested video on YouTube, and that video was called Flat Earth Clues by Mark K. Sargent. And I clicked on that video and my life changed forever. I went with the basics. I said, okay, well, if the earth was flat, the sun would never set. And I just did a little bit of research into that and I realized that the sun sets due to perspective and then it goes beyond a distance where its throw of light can no longer reach us and it gets eclipsed by what I call a cloud horizon. I tried finding reasons on why it's spherical and all I could come up with were NASA photos. Um, so, and then I realized that I had actually moved to the bottom of the globe and I'm technically living upside down, so that really kind of hit hard for me. The stars in Vedic astronomy are attached to the sidereal disk that is rotating above us. That's just, that was just part of the class. And what university is this? This is the Maharishi International University in Fairfield, Iowa. Now they call it the, the Maharishi uh, University of Management now. All the time are you open about this? I mean, do you talk to people about it that maybe you're skeptical? I mean, what's the kind of reaction you get from your social circle once you accepted this? First started out talking to my family. And me and my brothers got into a few arguments about it and uh, never really resolved. They just kind of dropped it as I started talking to more and more people around me. And yeah, at this point, I, I'll bring it up with like every lift I take. Most of my family thinks I'm crazy. Uh, but they won't research it, so they're a little crazy for not even looking into it. People around me were sort of like, shut up, that's stupid. Somebody even thought about having an intervention for me. So you, at that point, I'd were heard you under it. the assumption the earth was flat? Was it like... It was just one of those things, you put it there. I know that uh, the world is full of mysteries. Yeah. And if you said that this is all just the dream of my, my pet chihuahua, I'll take that in, <laughs> but what do you do with that? I've never heard that. That's a good one. We're in the dream of a chihuahua? Oh, oh we got it backwards. <laughs> it isn't God, it's dog. <laughs> we are in the creator's dream. Did you have that planned out before you said the chihuahua dream thing? That tied in really well. When you came to the realization of the flat earth, how did it impact your perception of reality? Did it impact religious beliefs that you maybe had? I feel more special, more significant. Um, I don't believe in evolution anymore. That's uh, a huge lie in itself. It made me question, like, how can you believe in a creator when it came from a Big Bang? It didn't come from a Big Bang, you know, but because we were created by a divine being. My faith has never been stronger that God is who he says he is and the world is what he says it was. Before Flat Earth, spirituality was a big part of my life. I was raised born again Christian and church was not just a Sunday thing. Uh, you know, we had youth group and vacation Bible school and all sorts of fun little extracurricular things. But when I got off the island and got into university, my mind was expanded and I fell away from the church for a number of decades. Flat Earth brought me back into spirituality. The Flat Earth showed me that we live in an intelligently created world, which means there's a creator. What you do with that uh, is, uh, is up to you. You can take it from there. I haven't gone into religion or worshiping because of it, but I definitely have a deeper feeling about the fact that all of us have, have value and we're here to do something with our life, not just aimlessly you know, fritter it away by playing video games and buying things. How it gets ruled out is one of the biggest questions I've been tackling for the last two years, which is how, how does it get ruled out naturally or do the powers that be try to turn it in a certain direction? Because it can only go one of two ways, and that is either flat earth is embraced as a good thing and we're all part of the same system and no one commits hate crimes and sex crimes, we don't go to war anymore and we can actually do what we were always capable of doing, or it goes the other way and the apocalypse starts. It can, it's really one, it's very, very polarizing, but I'm rooting for the glass half full and, and that we will be able to achieve what we always were meant to. So it's coming real soon. The meetup and interviews gave us tons of amazing content, and after going through it and putting this episode together, we decided to head to the beach to feel the breeze and give some final thoughts. So, how do you feel about Patricia and Mark after spending some time with them? I mean, 
it's obvious why people look at Patricia and Mark the way that they do. They're well-spoken, they're well-educated, they're charismatic, and when you have a conversation with them on the flat earth, you really do feel like you're getting the most potent information possible out of that conversation. What's a wrap? Even at the meetup, you know, you see people flocking to them, you see people asking them a million questions and walking away feeling satisfied and then sharing that information. So like Mark says, he's like the recruiter. You know, you watch his videos, you get a good bit of information, you go share it with people, you have these debates, you have these in-depth conversations about reality, and uh, I'm really excited that they came down to be a part of it. So how do you feel about the meetup? You know, the meetup was pretty surreal, I have to be honest. I mean, going into it, I really just wanted to interview some people, get some insight on what brings people into this movement, how it affects their beliefs and their life, their reality around them. But the variable that I hadn't anticipated was the fact that this video that I had done with Shane was the highest viewed video on YouTube regarding the topic. And it really was a huge moment for this movement. It put me into a certain light in the community that I didn't realize I was in. People were approaching me, telling me that the video changed their life and that they showed it to all their friends. And, it, and that really put some pressure on me. You know, it kind of made it difficult at first. I mean, right away people asked me, are you a flat earther? It was almost like I felt this need to say yes and the truth of the matter is, even in the video that I did with Shane, I never say I believe in the flat earth. You know, I say that I love the ideology around it, that I think there's a lot of positive that can come from people learning about it. But I, I say several times, I don't care about the shape of the earth. You see that within this community, there's a lot of um, people worrying about like infiltration or outsiders coming in and they're, they're worried about people's motives. I kind of felt like that for a second. They were all worried about me trying to make a piece that was mocking the movement. And uh, I wasn't expecting that, but you know, I think we got a lot of great footage. We got a lot of great conversations. So what's your overall opinion about the flat earth moving forward? So do I personally think that the flat earth is the ultimate truth and the answer, what's gonna bring us to unity and peace? I'm not sure, but it's a very intriguing conspiracy theory. Just like any others, it has layers to it. Take the JFK assassination. It's not about who shot him. It's about the government corruption, lies, and deceit. And when you start looking into that conspiracy, it opens up your eyes to so many things. And that's what the Flat Earth does. In talking to these people, it rejuvenates a sense of spirituality. It gives them a sense of awakening into their perspective. And there's not a lot of negative you can say about that. You know, everybody's looking for answers. Everybody wants to find the truth. We all want a sense of purpose. And this is a theory that provides that for people. And I'm really glad that we did this episode. And I really encourage everybody to look into it and see what it does for you.